You're watching DIY Nate. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to tell me about your project in the comments. Alright friends, on this episode of DIY Nate, we have two 40 volt Ryobi batteries that are both giving us the same problem, which is great for a testing purpose. You can see I've got the blinking charging light and these 40 volts. When I press this charge button, you're going to see the green blinking light there as well. The same is happening on this charger. I've tried charging it multiple times, testing out the different chargers, but I think both of them have reached their reset situation where they've either overheated or just had something wrong with them defectively. We'll say to uh, the Ryobi team's defense, these were purchased off uh, an online marketplace and I used them a couple of times. They work fine, charged up once or twice, but then are now back to defunct. So I think somebody has already done this exercise and reset their battery. We're gonna try and do it ourselves as well and we'll see how it goes. So take caution when you're doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the chargers now. Electricity is nothing to mess around with. So in this case though, I've seen a couple videos on how to do this and I'm gonna give it a shot because these are expensive batteries generally and I've been fixing up some tools myself. I like the Ryobi 40 volt system, I'm pretty happy with it. So what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna go ahead and take a Torx bit and generally you're gonna have some tabs in here that um, are little black plastic pieces that you're gonna need to pop off with a small screwdriver flathead. Most likely you're gonna have the safety screws, a T10H security screw in there. In my case, I think somebody has uh, kind of messed with these before. And so I think I'm gonna have success just using your standard T10, but we'll find out shortly. Yeah, I'm not able to get in there since I don't have the T10H model to get those security screws loose. So that's gonna create a little bit of a problem for me. So there is a little raised bump in there. And to get past that, you're gonna need that T10H security screw feature. These do not have that. So that leaves me with a little bit of a bind. I'm gonna have to stop this project for now and pick up once I've got that T10H. All right, if you're watching this video, this is the longer version of the entire process where I test both batteries. You're gonna find out throughout the course of this video that the first battery I test does not work. I'm able to reset it, but it doesn't take a charge. In the long run, the second battery does take a charge. I'm able to fully reset that. So this project in my mind is a success, but this is the long version of the video. So if you want all the tips and pointers, you wanna see how everything worked, you can certainly check that out. There is a shorter version of this video and I will leave the link in the video description if you wanna check out the shorter, more quick and to the point video. So if you're watching this video, if you want the long one, stay tuned. If you wanna to go to the short one, check in the link in the video description. I have some Ryobi. 40 volt batteries that are giving me a hard time. And in fairness, I did buy these off of Marketplace. And my current issue is they are both blinking with the light of death, indicating that they are defective in some way or having some issue. And I'm hoping the issue is just needing a reset. So I've seen some videos online about people, how they reset their batteries. A couple of the challenges with this, I do have two chargers and I've tried both with the different chargers. I'm not sure if the chargers are the problem or the battery, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess the battery since I've kind of mixed and matched and I haven't gotten any different results. So with this uh, this battery, what we're gonna end up taking these screws out, getting into the panel here, and then we're gonna use uh, a wire with electrical tape wrapped around it to try and reset the, uh, the link in between there. There's gonna be two little pinholes that have to both be pressed at the same time to kind of bridge the circuit or just reset it somehow. I don't exactly know how that works. But you may run into the issue that these screws are security bits and a security bit, unlike a standard Torx that has just a uh, star shape at the end, the security bit has a extra hole at the end there. So I believe these are going to be a T10 security bit. And so I'm going to use this one. I ordered these off of Amazon. I will leave a link in the video description if you're trying to execute this project. That being said, I'm by no means an electrician or anything like that. So, you know, take this as just entertainment value only. Uh, I have seen several people succeed with this project. So our hope is by resetting these batteries, it will uh, allow the system to reboot and we'll get the full value out of these. The other thing I'm gonna do as a test, I'm gonna put a uh, sticker on the side and each time I recharge it, I'm gonna see how many charges I get before I have to do this process again. If I reset it once and I get a charge and it's working again, great but I'm hoping I can do it several times without going back to this. I don't wanna keep doing this over and over, otherwise the batteries truly will be defective and it's just not worth my time to kind of keep opening them up every time they need a charge. First battery we're gonna go ahead and do, we'll do one at a time here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take my T10 security bit and you can see it fits in much better. If I tried the standard Torx, you'll notice uh, that I can't get in there. If your battery has plastic covers on there, you might have to use a flathead to get in on that and pop that open. 
Then you can use the security bit to get in there. I can see now that I can get onto that, that security bit and I'm gonna be able to open this guy up. Again, use caution when you're working with electricity. Uh, even though these are batteries, they are 40 volts, so there's some heavy juice in these things, and we wanna be careful we don't hurt ourselves or electrocute ourselves or anything like that. That one comes off. You might, um, you might find that you have to pry this plastic cover off, or I've seen some people run a cut across the top uh, just so that they can access it. I think I'm gonna cut it. Um, so we'll see how that looks once we get the uh, security bits out of there. This works, I'll be thrilled because these are expensive batteries. I did get some 40 volt equipment online, but I've become pretty happy with the 40 volt Ryobi system. Overall, it's a pretty cool system. I love Ryobi tools in general. So for me, this is exciting, a, a new generation of power tools. So, all right, so we've got the, uh, the screws out of there and now we're ready to take a look and look at the interior and see. I am gonna use some caution again, like I said, I wanna make sure I'm not gonna hurt myself uh, electrocuting wise or anything like that. So here we've got our plastic cover and it should come off of there. The, uh, the gotcha on that is over on this side, there's a line there. I think I'm gonna use a razor blade and just cut across that line. Not ideal because it's, you know, it would void the warranty I'm sure. But for me, these were bought online so I, there is no warranty. And there's a clean line here. I'm gonna just carefully come across it and see if I can get in there. So I've got scored it once there, go the other direction. Okay, so we've scored it both ways. We're gonna see if that was good enough. Okay, there we go. So now I've opened the Ryobi shell and I'm gonna pop that off. Okay, so now we're into the battery itself. We're gonna take a closer look. A very small place, I believe, right here that you probably can't even make it out. So right up here are two buttons that need to be compressed or depressed and I believe by joining them, you'll get the uh, the success that you're looking for for a reset. This wire obviously is way too big. I thought it was gonna be much smaller. As you can see, that uh, those holes are tiny. So I'm gonna need a much thinner gauge wire. I'm gonna go find one now and see if I can get something that's gonna be small enough to fit in those holes. So let's go do that. Okay, in some videos, I did see people talking about grounding themselves to make sure uh, there's no connectivity there. So in this example, these uh, these little, holes are both very tiny. So I've got a very thin piece of wire here. At the same time, I also pulled the paper clip out for reference because it would be great if I could figure out if this is roughly the same size that we need. So I'm gonna bend this paper clip and kind of make a, a U shape. And if we can use the household item, that's ideal because I'd like to make sure people know that yeah, hey, that'll work or no, it won't. If you can kind of come up with an item that, that works for you. So if I look at that, the paper clip I think might work. So I'm gonna wrap it in some uh, some electrical tape here. And the paper clip side, I like the idea of this because it is a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna try to insulate the, the paper clip a bit. You, if you had a piece of wire that already had the insulation, you could use that. Um, in my case though, I'm just trying to make the most out of this quick project and see if I can get something that's gonna work well for me as a little bit of a hack. So you can see here, we're gonna try and do this now I'm gonna ground myself to something. I'm trying to get those two holes. So if you can see this, uh, it may be difficult to see. I'm gonna try and put that on the first hole there. The paper clip looks like it might be a little bit too large, but we're gonna push. Oh, okay, so I just saw the light flash. So I think that got me the reset that I was looking for. And in this case, I am going to push that button. As you can see, I'm down to one button now, which is awesome. That means it has reset and we are good to go. That probably means we're low on charge. So uh, just with that simple reset, just by making that connection, using my piece of uh, the little hack here, the paper clip did, I think really all that's happening is you're making a, a wired connection between those two holes. Whether you even go into the hole, I, I don't know that I went all the way in. It's just basically making the metal connect the two and it's giving us a reset button. So we are now reset. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put this guy back into position. I am going to tighten these Torx bits down um, just so that we're actually going to start fully from scratch. I'm going to plug them back into charge and that's one done, which is pretty awesome. Got my snap-on ratcheting screwdriver. I'm a huge fan. Snap-on tools are great and they're, but they're on the pricey side, but this ratcheting effect lets you quickly drive. And again, I'm using that security bit, quickly drive that in. But as you can see, that was a pretty quick turnaround on that project. Pretty happy with how that turned out. So we're gonna go ahead and get one of these chargers out. And I'm gonna show you 
This, this battery we haven't done yet, I'll show you what it looks like today. Battery that we have not yet done. We have the blinking light. And then when we put it on the charger, we get the same effect. The charger shows red right here. Once we put the charger back on, the correct way, we also see red, but then I click the blinking light and now you can see the charger is blinking red USB. So that's the one we have not repaired yet. And we're hoping this other one now, again, we're blinking two lights there. That tells us we have a low power. And so when I plug this guy in, we went from red, now we're green. So that is awesome. We're seeing it do what it needs to do. If we click our button here, we're getting the four blinking lights, but we, uh, I think I clicked power, so that's not good. <laughs> so that may not have done what I thought it was gonna do. Let's see, that reset button might have tripped it, so it looks like I'm gonna be back to the drawing board with this guy. I thought, I thought I had it figured out. Apparently that blinking light is not playing nice. So we may have to let it charge up again. We're gonna try it one more time. Same thing, same scenario, same one, and we'll come back to it. But we're just gonna see if I can get this guy off and on again. I'm only gonna secure it with one next time so that I'm not having to do this whole process again. But I think it might take a couple rounds of resetting it and tricking it and resetting it. I think the issue is not so much the product itself. I think it's that the battery got super low and it needs to have a good clean charge or reset. Um, so we're gonna find out. All right, so we're picking back up on round two here. I'm not giving up at any point shortly unless these batteries are worth enough for me to mess with. And the video itself is worth a lot if it works. Obviously that'll be a, a big win for a lot of folks. Much faster doing that. Probably knock this out pretty quick with this drill. Security bit. Okay, I went ahead and cut the line there so that we can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that top again. There we go. Click the button while I was at it. So we're looking for that connection to be made and reset without harming ourselves. So I'm gonna come in here. Watch for the blinking light as well. I'm gonna try and get that paper clip in. Let's watch for that blinking light. So we get it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Solid green light showing. You can see it's actually in there right now. Let me go ahead and pull it out. So I didn't do that fully last time. What we are gonna do now, I'm gonna put the top back on. I'm gonna put one of these security bits, actually maybe two, one in each corner, pop those in, and we're gonna charge it off of that. I'm not gonna put them all in yet because my fear is that uh, even though I've reset it, it seemed quick that it was quickly to show defective a second ago. And so um, I'm hopeful that by putting in two screws and getting it on the charger, we can get this guy going again and he'll get a full charge. What I, my lesson last time was before I click the button, we're gonna take the win if the charger just even shows that it's charging. So right here, as you can see, charger is red. If it starts blinking red, we have a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and slip the charger on. We've got two lights showing, blinking green. I think that's a good sign for us. I'm gonna leave this alone right now. Now it's blinking red. So I don't think that did what I needed it to do. This battery very well may be fully defective. So we're gonna let it sit on the charge for a while. We'll just see how that goes. I may pull the top off again, try another reset. You know, you may have to experiment with this a few times. We'll take it off the charger one more time. Put it back on, blinking red still. So that's probably not a good sign for us, but we'll set it to the side and we'll work on the other one. See if we get a different result. Two different batteries experiencing different things, two different chargers as well. So we'll test this one with a different charger and see if maybe the charger is the problem. Easier project than I thought. Downside, work. will it work or not is a whole different question. It'd be nice if I could figure out if one of the triggers was the problem. That would be a big win, uh, but I don't know if that's the case. I'm certainly gonna test this other one with a different charger as well. Um, so we got our, our screws off there. Now in this case, we're gonna go ahead and do the same approach we did before. We're gonna strike across this line so that we've got access to the inner 
innards of the battery. If you're doing this though, remember you're probably voiding your warranty by accessing this panel. The security bits are on there for a reason. We don't really want people messing with it. But if you're at the point that I'm at, you're probably not getting any warranty work anyway from Ryobi. So we're gonna go ahead and take that top off. I'm gonna check for debris and dust in there too. You might find that there may be some noise in your battery or other stuff that needs to be cleaned out. Don't really see anything causing too much trouble in there on the circuit board. A little bit of grime, but we'll go ahead and set it. So again, as we did before, our coated paper clip, we're going to go ahead and put one in the reset button there. You know what? I'm going to go the other direction. We're going to go this side first. There we go. And I went a little bit far in there. Leave it for a couple seconds. I don't know if that'll have anything to do with what we're getting different wise, but that got us the reset. At this point, I think I can click that button. We got the blinking green light. Let's see again. Blinking green light. So that seems like a good sign. At the same time, once we put the cover back on, what we saw before is the cover on and some of the other changes kind of seem to jack with it. So we're hoping this guy will give us some different results. Put two of the bolts in, two of the screws. And we'll get it charging and see how it does. And let's just see if we're blinking one time green. We are. So that's a good sign. One blink green gives us the impression that we should be okay to charge. The charger itself, last time we ran into the issue that did not seem to pick up on the other battery. I'm hoping this one has less of an issue. We'll find out shortly. Let it plug them in. Roll out the cover connected. Let's just see. We've got a red button there. We're going to come up here and pop this guy over. Blinking green. On the top, we're blinking green. I'm going to leave this guy alone and fingers crossed he will charge. Still blinking green. That's a good sign. I'm going to let him do his thing and not mess with him. Fingers crossed, at least one of these two working would be awesome. So this also might be my, my good charger. We'll find out soon. We're gonna let this guy run for a bit and deal with some other projects and we'll come back in a bit. All right, so our charging is underway with this one. It's a good sign, green blinking light. That's definitely a good sign. We're gonna keep letting it charge for a while. Hopefully it'll fill all the way up. So one battery has been fixed with the reset and it's now fully charging, which is great. The other one is not taking a charge as it stands. Right now, I'm pretty confident I'm only going to be able to save one of these two batteries. I'll be able to save one of these two is actually a win in my book and also made for a good video to show you how to do it in my success. The other one being that broken and defective it is what it is. You know, sometimes you're not going to be able to salvage all of them, but it might be worth a try before you put them in the dump. So if this video helped you out, don't forget to leave me a comment and like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Thanks for watching DIY Nate.